is Health Talk. Welcome everyone to Healthy Living on Dove Television. It's another time for us to talk about our health. And today we have an interesting topic or we have um, a focus, a nice focus that we should talk about today. And I know that this area of concentration today would be of a blessing to you because the Bible says that God wants us to be in good health even as our soul prospers, you understand? So while we talk about all of the good and spiritual things of life, we should also pay attention to our good health because you need a healthy life to actually serve God. <laughs> you understand? When your tooth is aching you, oh, no matter how anointed the pastor is and how hot the sermon is, you won't understand. I've been there. I've, had, I've been there once, you know, having had this one to get close to my premolar. And uh, we thank God for that. So it's actually important that we pay attention to our health. And that's why Healthy Living on Dove TV comes to you every week so we can talk about our health. My name is Lillian Okedegbe. And today I've been joined in the studio by... Um, my doctor, who's going to talk to us about something, and that's because we're paying attention to our tips. All right, so we have a dental surgeon here. Joining me in the studio now is Dr. Tokpe Aladirin. He is a de dental surgeon, also with the Redeemer's Health Center at the Redemption Camp. Hello, doctor. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good morning. Good morning to you. How yeah. are you doing? How is the family? Oh, thank God. And how is the dental clinic? <laughs> <laughs> Going fine. Thank you. <laughs> All right, sir. So you're welcome to Healthy Living on Dove TV. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So today on Healthy Living, we have an interesting topic, and I just hope that uh, as we pay rapt attention to today's topic, definitely you'll be glad that you did watch, if only you also do watch to the end of the program. But uh, even as we start the conversation and talk, so it doesn't look like one of those health talk, regular health talk that you watch on TV or you go for seminars and all of that. Without the presence of God, it will just be a mad talk. So we'd like to invite the presence of God so that we're on YouTube, it's streaming live there, and um, the handle is Dove Television. You can also follow us on Instagram, also using the handle at Dove Television. Please do not forget to also download the OH Prime TV, okay, on your mobile device. Please uh, visit your Google Play Store or Apple Play Store. Download the OH Prime TV so you can watch Dove Entertainment, Dove Africa, Dove Europe, and... Um, Beautiful programs there and different stations there that you can also watch. God bless you for joining us today. And our topic and our focus of concentration today on healthy living is healthy teeth for a healthy life. Healthy teeth for a healthy life. So how much do you know about your teeth? Now, before we start the conversation, we'd like you to look at this short report. So when we come back, we'll start the conversation and talk about our teeth. So let's take a look at this report on the teeth. <laughs> A good smile can be attractive and contagious. This can only happen with a white and nice set of teeth. The human teeth include incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Children will usually get all of their 20 primary teeth by around the age of 3 and by the age of 21, most people would have gotten their wisdom tooth and have all their 32 permanent teeth. Practicing good dental care from infancy to adulthood can help a person keep their teeth and gums healthy. Poor oral hygiene can lead to a buildup of harmful dental plaque, which can eventually result in tooth decay and gum disease. Unhealthy teeth can cause various health issues such as Increased risks of respiratory infections like chronic obstructive pulmonary and pneumonia contribute to the type of degeneration associated with Alzheimer's disease. Increased risks of chronic kidney diseases among toothless adults. Heart problems such as endocarditis and other functional irregularities. Unhealthy skin and odor appearance caused by gum recession and bone loss. Teeth are essential for chewing food properly and helping people to speak. If you start establishing good dental hygiene habits today, you can prevent all these health problems later in the future. Right, so paying attention to your oral hygiene can actually keep you a little far away from the dental surgeon. <laughs> and if you do not, you might have to visit them even more often than uh, expected. So um, we're about to talk about our teeth today. Now, doctor, you listened to that report. Does it really tell that about our teeth? Tell us about 
our teeth. I feel like bringing out my 36 <laughs> teeth right now on the table so you can tell me the formation, what they are made up of, yeah. and um, their functions. Yeah. I don't, I'm not even sure I have 30, 32 anymore. I think I've removed like two. <laughs> All right, Dr. Please. Okay. Um, you see, like we saw in the video, the teeth is a very, very important part of the body. It's very important. And you can see how far not taking good care of your teeth can go from the video. Now, starting from the anatomy, what the teeth is exactly. Uh, an adult should have 32 teeth. Not to forget, let me mention the function of the teeth first. Okay. The tooth has two major functions, masticatory function and aesthetic function. Masticatory function means that you use your teeth in biting, in chewing. Okay. Whatever thing that enters into your body, even the medications you take goes through the mouth. Yeah. Whatever things that enters into your body most times goes through the mouth. So when you eat, it goes through the mouth. You use your teeth in chewing them. That's what's called the masticatory function. Even sometimes before you chew, you bite them. Before you bite, you chew. Uh, after biting, you chew. So that's one major importance of the teeth. The other part is the aesthetic function. You can see, I saw it, it, someone that I was smiling. Yeah. Like you have been smiling since morning now. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't have teeth, mm. you won't even bother, you won't smile. So aesthetic function, there are a lot of people that without teeth, they cannot come out of their house, they cannot do anything because it's, the teeth gives aesthetics to the face. The teeth itself defines what the face looks like. If you see someone without teeth, if you see the face, it's not good. I, I'm sure you don't want to see it. I don't want to see I'm not sure I've seen a toothless <laughs> person anyway. I'm yes, not sure. it's not good. Okay. So when it comes to the type of teeth, like you said, you're not sure you have the two teeth. No, adults. Yeah. Should have 32 teeth. I, should, I think I do have 32, but I've got two out already. I extracted two out. I had, um, I, I had toothache, I mean, tooth decay at some point of my mm -hmm. life, and mm -hmm. close to my premolars. I think I removed two of my so, premolars also. So now, the teeth, there are, when you, you're being given birth to, a baby it comes with no teeth. Yeah. At the age of, from six months, the baby starts to grow teeth, you know? That also gives the baby its own aesthetics. And also, by that time, as well, you know, you want to start introducing some form of food to the baby. Now, a child should have 20 teeth. We call them milk teeth. Okay. That's 10 down, 10 up. Okay. 10 in the lower jaw, 10 in the upper jaw. By the time the child grows, getting to an adult, even a teenager, the milk teeth fall off. Okay. And new set of teeth come out. We call out. those new set of teeth permanent teeth. Okay. Or we call them secondary teeth. Okay. That is different from the milk teeth. Now when the permanent teeth comes out, the okay. jaws are bigger. Mm. So you have what we call your permanent teeth and they are 32. Okay. But it comes out, they come out in stages. They don't come out all together at the same time. It starts with the front ones. That's the incisors. Okay. And that's the teeth you use in smiling. That's what you see in front. When you see people the incisors, the major function of this is used in biting. I'm okay. sure when you want to take your apple now, you hold your apple, you bite. Right, you don't bite from the side. Yes. Most times you bite, you bite from, from the front. front. So, so the front teeth are known as the incisors. incisors. All right, okay. And they are used in biting. Okay. So the front, first front, four teeth, incisors. I don't know if you can okay, use yes, this yes, model. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, you have a model already. Yes. Okay. So if you, can, if you look at this, these are the incisors. One, two, three, four. Okay. Also the down one, one, two, three, four. They are the incisors, the first four teeth in front. Okay. Now, just immediately after the incisors, we have what we call the canine. Okay. It's always a pointed teeth with a very sharp edge. Right. That's why maybe when you want to do something or you want to tear something, mm. you, you go like this right. and try to tear. Right, yes, you had to do it from the front. Most time we take it to the yes. to this sharp, it's usually very sharp, sharper very sharp. than others. Yeah. Yes. All right. That's the canine. Okay. It's just one, 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 one. That's right. four. Four canines. Two up, two down. They are just after the incisors. So okay. you use them most times in tearing, you know. Uh, even if you want to, I'm, I'm sure you'll see a lot of people when they want to do things like tearing or like biting stuff mm. from time. Mm. That's what they use. Very, very sharp. Mm. Immediately after the canine, we have the premolar. Okay. Now we have two premolars for the adults. We have two premolars. They are also used in tearing and they can also be, they are also used in grinding. Okay. But the major tool used in grinding okay. is the molars. Right. Adults should have two to three molars on each side of the mouth. You no, know, the mouth is divided into four quadrants. Mm. As it's open like this, this one quadrant, this is another quadrant, mm. then 
and that quadrant here, and that quadrant here. That's right. four quadrants. Right. So there should be two to three molars on each quadrant. Right. Now, normally, two molars on each quadrant are fine. Okay. The last tooth that comes out, we call it the wisdom tooth. Okay. That's the last one. Most times, even some adults don't have it yet. That's the last? The last the one? The last one. All right. Okay. I thought that mouth. was the molar or something. Yeah, it's called the wisdom tooth. It's okay. a molar tooth. All right. Okay. But, you know, like I said, two to three molars. Right. So most adults have two molars. Some, they have three molars. Maybe because the reason is that the last molar, it comes out late. Normally, it comes out maybe about 17, 18 for early eruptors, people that they are too... But there are some, even at the age of 30, their last molars are not out. Wow. It might just be there inside the bone, but it's not seeing a space to come out from. Right. The other two have occupied the entire space. So right. that's how many times when it comes out, it doesn't come out straight, it comes out bent. Okay. You know, it's, we call it impacted. It comes out impacted because it's looking for its own way, yeah. track, it's way space to, to stay. space to come out from. Right. And, you know, when it comes out that way, the resultant effect with that is that we remove it. Mm. We confidently remove it most times because you already have two molar yeah. that are they are using in chewing. So mm. you don't actually need you don't actually need it. Right. Yes. So instead of it giving you a problem or giving you an issue, we remove the last molar. Oh, if it's inconveniencing that person's yes. mouth, you yes. could just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Okay. Yes. Right. Is there a difference between um, an adult's teeth and that of and that of a child? Unit. Yes. What's the difference? Now, like I said earlier, an, a child has 20 milk teeth. We call it milk teeth. Right. Now, number one is that the teeth are smaller. Okay. Number two is that they are whiter. I see a lot of patients every day. Mm. They come in uh, with their child. Mm. When my child was young, mm. the teeth was white. Right. It doesn't brush well. Mm. The teeth is now brown. I'm telling you. You cannot compare the milk teeth right. to the permanent teeth. So ordinarily, it comes white. It comes Regardless white. of what the child eats. Yes. It's just a natural thing. Yes. So the milk teeth is whiter than the permanent teeth. Mm. By the time the milk teeth falls off and the permanent start coming out and you start seeing it looking brown, you're already concerned. Ah, ah. No, this child does not brush well. This mm. is, it's not an issue. Mm. Naturally, God has given everybody their color of teeth. Really? Yes. So everybody has got a unique color of teeth. Unique color we of don't teeth. have the same color of teeth. No. Are you kidding me? Your, I never your knew teeth, that. Your color of teeth is not the same thing as mine. Okay. So by the time your teeth, you your start growing your permanent teeth. Mm. Uh, you know, even research has it that there's correlation between the color of the teeth to the skin. Really? Yes. Okay. Sometimes that's why you see some people that are darker, they have white teeth. Ah, okay. And some people that are lighter don't have as their teeth are not as white as those <laughs> that are darker. Okay. So there's a way we start as that there's a correlation between how the, the, your, the skin color is and the color of the teeth. So but your color of your, your, your teeth is unique to you. So far you take good care of your teeth. Hmm. So the teeth can have some pathological some issues, mm -hmm. but there's the color that your teeth usually have. But you know, as women want to look finer, want to mm. aesthetically, we are, uh, we, are in, we are more conscious about our look. Mm. So we want to make it whiter. Mm. So we see a lot of patients that come, I want to do tooth whitening, mm. I want to whiten my teeth and, and all. So. All right. So before we go into, because I think I'm also interested in that, okay, how to whiten the teeth. And I mean, I mean, when you see someone smile and the teeth are white, I'm like, that guy is cute. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. So um, this is now the teeth. It helps to do a lot of things for the body and all of that. How do I ensure that my teeth are healthy? Are there, some, are there infections that could affect my teeth? And what are possible infections that my teeth could get yes. affected with? Good. Um, you see, from the video watched first, you know, they talked about um, some pellicles, pl calculus, plaques. You see, regardless of how much you brush, morning and night, and there are some things we call pellicles. We call them pellicles, we call them plaque. Plugs, okay. Yes. They, uh, they are on the, t on the teeth. You know, after brushing, you go about your daily activities. You go and you, do, you eat food. Mm. You know? There are some remnants that just stick to the teeth. Mm. Those things, they just form like pellicles. You see them soft. Sometimes when you, when you, when you use your hand on your teeth mm. and scratch your teeth, you just see something whitish. Okay, sometimes it could be brown. It could be brown, yeah. okay. yes. Those okay. things, at the end of the day, they okay, pile this, up. This is a plug, right? Yes. Plug. Okay. Yes. All right. okay. So those things pile up at the angles of the teeth. Mm. Like if you look at this person now, this person has not been brushing well. Mm. You know, when you don't use the right brushing technique, mm. uh, the, the earlier... Um, the, the earlier picture, the picture is better. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's, okay, yeah, when, you don't, when you don't 
use the right brushing technique. Right. Those pellicles hang in between the teeth. Okay. And when they hang in between the teeth, they will stay there for a while and they will get calcified. They get hard. Mm. And your brush cannot remove them again. Wow, okay. So this is like the start of a dental infection. Because the with starts. this, yes. Right. With this now, this, those pellicles, those uh, calculus, they contain bacteria. Mm. Those bacteria go into the gum. They start to affect the gum. Okay. They start to affect the teeth. They start to affect the, 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 the tooth itself. Mm. The gum, the bone, and the tooth. So that's why if, if nothing is done to this kind of patient now, they come to the clinic and uh, my teeth is shaking. Mm. Or oh, my gums are paining me. You know? They already seen the effect of the calculus on their teeth. All right. So this is, this is calculus, right? Yeah. Now, why does it seem like this picture of a calculus has this scattered, unarranged teeth? Yes, uh, like this um, particular picture you can yeah. see now, the patient does not have a well arranged teeth. Right. Yes, and patients like that are susceptible to having more calculus. Okay. So even some patients like this must regularly visit their dental clinic. Right. So we see before, it can see very yes. touch back, and then so the other one is. There's a procedure scaling called scaling and polishing. Scaling and polishing, okay. It's a professional washing of the teeth. You know, there's a machine, we use it in washing the teeth. That's why I say, regardless of how much you brush, morning and night, mm. every six months, it's important you visit the dental clinic. Okay. When you visit the dental so clinic... So this is scaling right now? Yes. Okay. The machine, the tip of the machine is just something like that. Right. You can see, it looks like as they are using that thing, it's removing the yeah, calculus. The calculus, yes, yes, and it flakes out. And okay. They are coming out. Okay. So the, the machine, the tip of the machine is just like that. We use it in removing those calculus. Right. When you remove those things, you know, your mouth is free. In fact, when you are done, you feel it, or you feel fresher. Your breath is fresher because those calculus itself they cause they cause bad bad breaths. Okay. So many times when patients come, uh, my mouth is smelling. I have bad breath. People are covering their nose. Mm. When was the last time you did your scaling and polishing? So this is like asking when was the last time you saw a dentist? When was the last time you saw a dentist? Uh, you know what? It, Talking about seeing a dentist, we actually went to the streets to ask a few people you know, if they've ever seen a dentist and when was the last time they actually did. And the responses were quite amazing. Well, if you ask me, <laughs> you don't want to know what my response is. So, you know, doctor, at this moment, let's just take this look and uh, hear what people say about seeing a dentist and the last time they actually did so one. Let's take a report on that. We'll be right back. Uh, it never happened. It never happened. I don't normally have a teeth uh, issue, so I don't go there. It's a long time, up to five years. It's more normal than that. I'm not really, there's one was troubling me here that I went to remove it. It was then I was there last at the General Hospital at Your teeth? Yes, I am. That was three years ago. I had a hole in my teeth, so I went to see a dentist and then he operated my teeth like I think one to two hours, then I was fine. Filled it with whatever they put there. And that should be like um, maybe six years ago. I went to remove a tooth. <laughs> can't remember. Like, it's been long, like long. I mean, long. I can't remember. Not so recent now. Uh, like a year ago, anyway. Like a year ago. <laughs> Zane, amazing. You know, um, I like somebody said six years ago. And one of the respondents said when he had toothache. If you ask me, I think that's about the last time I actually did when I went to actually remove um, to extract uh, my, my tooth because I had, it was aching me, it was actually, I had tooth um, decay. I mean, and now you're saying people should always visit the dentist. From those, res from those responses, how do you feel being a dentist? I don't feel sad. You feel sad? <laughs> Very sad. Because, I mean, a lot of campaign, we have been trying to grow a lot of awareness. We want people to visit the dental clinic. Mm. Now, the thing is, a lot of the people that we spoke to now, they said they've removed the one tooth or the other. Mm. They came to remove their tooth. I think just one person said that he filled a tooth. Right, yes. Now, not, there's nothing better than your natural teeth. There's nothing better than the tooth God gave you from heaven, like you have it, and you have it complete. You don't have to remove your teeth. But when you don't do anything to your teeth, you don't visit the dentist, and you come down with pain, large hole on your teeth, we don't have a choice, we have to remove them. So why not prevent removing of the tooth? Why not prevent you coming down with those pain 
those eight that you come down with. Instead, just prevent them. Visit the dental clinic. It is important that you visit the dental clinic every six months. Every six months? Yes, every six months. In fact, there are some peculiar patients that I see, and I tell them that you be coming every three months. Why? There are some conditions that I see, I'm like, you know, I want to see you three, three months. Before, okay, maybe after a while, I want to increase it to six months. Okay. But it is the recommended period is six months. Whether you feel toothache, whether you feel normal, you don't feel anything, visit the dentist. Scaling and polishing should be done every six months. That calculus you see, starting that way, mm. can be the start of leading to several disease conditions that we saw earlier. Mm. Mm. Just that little plaque. And just you coming to the dental clinic, we using scaling and polishing to remove them. I saved you, whatever. Remo doing vis visiting the dentist every six months, I've saved you toothache, saved you removing any of your teeth. Mm. Because when you come for do the dental clinic, we do just consultation, a general checkup of your mouth, of your teeth. Mm. If there's any issue, it's detected early. If, there, if there's a hole in your teeth, and the hole is very small, a minute hole, mm. we just fill it up, mm. and you are fine. I was going to even ask that when someone has a tooth, a tooth um, decay, what do you advise? Do you advise to extract or you ad advise filling? Now, when it comes to toothache, a uh, tooth, tooth decay, decay, right? There are levels at which the tooth decay, right? And the kind of treatment we can give it. Okay. Now, you see this white part. If I'm going to explain it, yeah. this white part that's the enamel. We call it the enamel. Okay. That's the part we see. If there's a hole there, on that part, and you don't feel pain, it's not deep. Hmm. Just at the top of it. Easily, we we'll just fill it. Mm. We we'll just fill the hole. But once that hole gets to the next, you know, the tooth are in layers. The next layer after the enamel is called the dentin. Once it gets to that layer, that's when the patient starts to feel sensitivity. Okay. The dentin is the sensitive part of the tooth. You know, you take out of cold water, you eat food, you feel sensitive. You know, you see them just, they say they just feel like mm. just a little sensation on mm. the tooth. We can still feel the tooth okay. at that level. Now, once it gets to the neck layer, which is the pulp, the pulp of the tooth is the, is the deeper most part of the tooth. It is where the blood supply and the nerve supply of the tooth comes from. Once it all gets to the pulp, that's when the patient comes down with severe pain. You see them run down to the clinic. They run down like as emergency. The pain is severe. Very severe. Unbearable Very severe. Sometimes. Unbearable pain. Right. So now, at that point, we are at the stage of deciding, can we save the tooth, can we sa not save it? Okay. Now, it gets to a level that if the, tooth, if the hole is very bad and it has taken a lot of the tooth structures, right. we cannot save the tooth. You we just extract it. Okay. In preventing all of this, all of this trouble of the teeth, all of this from troubling the teeth, what is the normal um, routine, daily routine for my, for my mouth or my teeth in order to have a healthy teeth? Yes. The daily routine is that, one, you brush every day okay now brushing every day comes with some instruction you brush in the morning and at night the night brushing also comes with some instruction now you brush in the night last thing at night when you are about going to sleep right. i like this picture that i'm seeing right now it shows like um, probably better way to brush your teeth yes right okay yes so should i show oh please. okay yeah i was going to ask yeah. now in brushing my teeth are there are they I know there are hard brushes and soft brushes. Which is the best or which, which, which do you recommend okay. for me? So for, we recommend medium textured toothbrush. Right. I know you have some brushes here, yes. doctor. Okay. We recommend medium textured toothbrush. Okay. Most of the time, if you just look at them, you might not be able to tell. Right. But it's when you feel it, okay. you are able to tell. Now, if you look at this, this is a soft brush. Okay, let me see. Okay. It's right. quite soft. Now, next one here is the medium. All right. If you look, feel, feel the texture, you see it's... it's not too hard. Yes. Not too hard, not too soft. Now, compare it to what we have here. Right. So, the medium textured one is the one that we recommend okay. for you to use to brush. Okay. The reason is the hard brush. Once you use the hard brush, mm. you know, it's like you are using um, hard substance on your body. Okay. You peel up your skin. Imagine you carry something hard, a right. stone, and start scratching you. Okay. You peel up your skin. So you don't recommend a hard tooth brush for brushing. Okay. Brush. Now, in removing, I've got, I think you've got, uh, what's that? 
That's a flux or something. Yes. All right, so how now, do we... Part of, part of what you're supposed to do, right. in, um, aside brushing morning and night, right. you're supposed to use flux. Okay. Now, a lot of people use toothpick. I do, most times. Yeah. <laughs> Let me so, it's okay. Now, the toothpick causes more damage to the, to the gum okay. and even to the tooth. You know, when you use your toothpick, when you use toothpick in between your teeth, right. now, you remove the meat now, the yeah. hang there, or anything that hang there. Yeah. You just remove a quantity of them. Right. You actually push a quantity in. Oh, really? Yeah, so the quantity you remove out, you feel relieved, but right. you don't know you have pushed some in and so you have when caused I use, damage. So when I use a dental flux, like what I just saw on TV right yes. now, which I'm holding one in my hand, yes. it helps to remove all of that. Yes. So yeah. there's, in fact, once anything hangs in, in between your teeth, just put a flux in, the rope part, put it in there and yeah. remove whatever it's hanging there. That's fine. You know, some, I know there are different types of um, dental flux. A lot of people do not know how to, okay, you have this um, rope type on TV right now. Yeah, just I mean, flux. Yeah, yes. people find it difficult to actually use this, any of this yeah, boxes, because, either this or the rope. Yes, Be for the rope one, because of, you know, making it more easy to undo, mm. you can get the one that has the stick on it. So you just put it in between the teeth and remove anything that is there. For the rope one, all you just need to do is tie it in, on your fingers, mm. then put it in the... No, normally, we educate patients on how to use it okay. when they come to the clinic. If, if it's the rope one they have, we educate them okay. on how to use the rope one. All right. So, doctor, you said earlier that uh, when in taking care of my teeth and oral hygiene, talking about oral hygiene, that uh, I should visit the, uh, the dentist once every six months. Yeah. And also, I should try as much as possible to brush twice a day. Yes. That's a little difficult, <laughs> you know, sometimes yes. to do. Anyways, I've dropped the signal that we need to go on a quick break. When we come back from this break, we'll continue and maybe also ask how we can achieve that i actually did um went to the streets and a lot of people actually shared their their view on that so let's take a break when we come back we'd like to open our phone lines so you can also call and this conversation will continue on oral hygiene god bless you Inquiries and feedback on our channel. Kindly call this number 08029 657760. 08029 Or send us email feedback at dovision.org. Thank you and God bless you. Welcome back. Thank you so much for watching Healthy Living on Dove Television. And today we are paying our attention to our oral hygiene, um, that you should take care of your teeth, your mouth, you know. And that's what we are discussing today. I've been joined in the studio by Dr. Tokwe, who is also a dental surgeon with the Redeemers Health Center here at the Redemption Camp in Nigeria. So um, at this moment, okay, we'd like to open our phone line now. So you can call us. Feel free to call in and ask your question. Now, this is like a free clinic on air, okay? So <laughs> feel free to um, ask the dentist your question on your teeth, your mouth, and um, also contribute. Have you had any experience, okay, using any of the dental fluxes or you've had difficulties with your teeth and you want to know a little more about that, please feel free to call in. Also send us your SMS. Thank you so much. And when you do call, reduce the volume on your TV set just when your call is transferred to the studio. Thank you. So, doctor, um, you said brush daily, um, visit the dental clinic, um, brush your teeth. Let's also look at, in brushing my teeth, how, what are the things I should do when I'm brushing my mouth generally, when I'm washing my mouth generally? What are okay. how so, aside <laughs> you just um, brushing your teeth, mm. a very peculiar part that people miss is yeah. the tongue. The, t the tongue, okay. Yes. You're also supposed to scrub the tongue. Okay. Now, uh, let me also mention that while brushing, like the picture we saw earlier right. brushing, okay. the bristles of your brush should go in between, in between the tooth. Mm. So you're supposed to go brush from your gum downward for mm. the upper part. Mm. And I'm going to show this. 
you open your mouth and you take your brush from the gum downward. So you are scrubbing it this way. Right. And also from the down part, down part you take it up. up. Okay. While the part you use in chewing, right. you're also doing okay. this on it. Okay. Then your tongue, make sure you scrub your tongue. Right. For the inside part too, right. you're going from the gum area downward. Okay. The reason is this. Many a times, this is what we do. Yeah. <laughs> now, those pictures we saw earlier, right. when we do this, yeah. you see that those things are hanging in between. The plates will stay there. Yes, okay. they're hanging in between the two. That's because okay. when you do this, you just push them in between the tooth. Okay. Nothing brings them out oh. of the tooth. So, but once you do like this, you're able to bring them out of the tooth. Right. If I don't scrub my tongue, does it have any negative effects? Yes. What does it do? Yes. When you don't scrub your tongue, mm. it accumulates dirt on the tongue. Okay. And that's when you see people come down with mouth odor. Okay. Yes. And you see some tongue. You see, the, you see it's just white. You see dead on it. Right. And you'll be like, ah, but I brush my teeth every day. Why do I still have odor, mouth odor? Okay. It's because you don't scrub the tongue. So not washing your tongue properly can actually lead to bad breath. Bad breath. Does it yes. affect my taste bud? Yes. The, oh, it very does? Well. Really? Very well. Okay. You know, there are a lot of taste bud on the tooth. So right. imagine dead accumulate on the taste bud. On the taste bud. Mm. It blocks the bud. And you know, you can't even taste so anything. So you can't taste. So that's when you see some people that no matter what they eat, it's not sweet. <laughs> so you tell them to go and brush your tongue. <laughs> All right. So if you want to test and test well like when you're eating, so you can, you know, I have a, I have a friend that um, when, she, when she cracks a bone of either chicken or turkey or anything, when she cracks the bone, when it's well, you know, cooked and all of that. She can actually tell if it's well spiced or not. She can tell if you just a shallow f um, spice or yeah. it was well spiced and all of that because she cracks and she can tell everything about Our it. Taste like, are very Our taste buds are very active, yeah. right? Mm. Okay. You know what, doctor, speaking about um, brushing daily, I think it's such a very, a little bit difficult routine anyway to actually keep up with, you know, with mm. a lot of people so we actually went to the streets and we asked people how often they do br they brush their teeth and uh, we had amazing responses so we like to take that break and when we come back i'll begin to take your calls thank you once <laughs> i brush once in a day well most times twice but it's not consistent when i remember twice and if i don't once Twice, morning and night. Twice, that's what I do. And I use shako. The half fluoride. fluoride. Yes. <laughs> sometimes twice, sometimes one, once in a day. So that's how I do. Twice. Some says once, some say, I mean, it's just... When, when, you, when you hear this as a dentist, I know the other time you said you felt bad, that people, don't, people, felt, uh, people said they haven't visited a dentist in a long while. So when, at this time, despite all of that, how do you feel that people still brush once? I mean, it's quite a difficult routine anyway, sometimes. Yes, but, um, you know, there's something about once you're consistent with it, you get used to it. Mm. You know, once you're consistent with it, at a particular time, you, when, when you're you going to bed to sleep mm. and you have not brushed, you don't feel comfortable. So you want to stand up to go and brush. A, a lot of people, before going to bed, they take their bath. Mm. So if you cannot sleep without taking your bath, your bath, you should also not be able to sleep without brushing. What if I use mouthwash to just goggle and just uh, go out? Does even, that work? Even mouthwash is not recommended all the time. You don't, okay. you don't use mouthwash as a daily routine. Okay. Yes. We use mouthwash, maybe uh, let it be recommended for you by the dentist. Okay. Let's, let's, see the reason. let's give you a reason why to use mouthwash. Even when we recommend mouthwash, we don't recommend it long, like forever. A lot of people use mouthwash and they keep using, keep using. Mm -hmm. Mouthwash causes staining of the tooth when you use it for a long time. So the recommended thing is you brush. Brush in the morning and brush at night before going to bed. Such that once you brush at night, you're not putting anything into the mouth again. Okay. That's a very important one too. Once you brush at night, All right. don't put anything, anything in Anything in your mouth again. again. All right, so let's take our very first caller now. We have Chidima who has called us from Lagos. Hello Chidima, thank you for joining us. Hello Chidima, you're live. Can you go ahead? Oh, we just lost the call from Chidima. 
please call us back. Thank you so much for watching and also calling in. We appreciate that. All right, doctor. So you said that the last thing to do after having your bath, brush your teeth and make sure you do not take anything. So mm -hmm. let's look at um, are there things that I shouldn't eat at all in order to keep my teeth healthy? What do you advise? Are they kind of food or kind of fruits? Yes. You know, a lot of things that causes, especially oil on the tooth, uh, we call them karyogenic diets. These are diets that, you know, causes, they, they, eat, up, they eat up the tooth. Now, things like um, sweet, chewing gum, chocolate. Well, I'm not saying we should not take those things. Okay. But, you know, those things, when you take them and they stick to the teeth, Bacteria act on them, on, the, on those things on the teeth, and they start to eat up the teeth, causing hole on the teeth. Right. So it's advised to reduce... The candies. Yes. Okay. Reduce the number of things you take, those um, carrageenic things. That's why when you even take them, mm. brush immediately. All right, I'm trying to look at what is in the, in, in, on TV right now. So um, it's saying we should avoid sugary and candy sweet, right? Yes. And some beverages, is that true? I should avoid certain be beverages and juices. Yes. Okay. You know, a lot of these things, they are carbonated. Right. And they are, they are, they are bacteria friendly. So okay. once you take them and, you know, bacteria, normally there are bacteria in the mouth. So once bacteria see an avenue, ah, this thing Something is Something is attractive and calling yes. it out. Okay. So once they are attached to the teeth, you just see they start to eat up the teeth. They start right. to eat it up. And that's when you start having all. Mm. And the holes keep, they all keep getting deeper. When you just hold on your teeth, it keeps getting deeper until... You do something to it. You know, we fill it up. Once we notice, we fill it up. We know we try and make sure we stop the process of the old formation. Okay. Immediately we notice that. So if you can see there, they talk about sticky foods. Right. You know, a lot of time we take a lot of sticky foods, chips. You know, they just stick to the teeth. Plantain, mm. they stick to the teeth. You know, and many times you use your tongue. You want <laughs> to remove them. You don't remove them. Finish. Mm. But then they are there. Right. You know, especially the molars. They have grooves. They have pits. Mm. That's what helps in grinding. So mm. things pack in between those, those places. And if you don't brush, if you don't remove them well, they just stay there. And if bacteria say, there's food there, let me act okay. on that place. So the reason, the reason the, the tube decays are those things that hang around the cavity area. So yes. the bacteria says, oh, there's something that actually nibble on, something to actually eat, feed on, exactly. so they come out. So you're advising that, uh, then does that not mean that at, after every meal, that I should brush so that I don't have things left over for the bacteria it to It is good, on. but we know that it's not something that you can keep up to. Right. Well, after every meal, rinse your mouth with water. Water. Rinse your mouth thoroughly with water, such that anything hanging in between your teeth leaves. That's one. Two, after every meal, flux. Mm. After every meal, flux. Yes. Okay. I think this sounds... This sounds a little better to actually flux after every, every meal, meal because rinsing the mouth with water, I mean, I eat like five times and there are times I might not have water um, by my side or place to actually pour out when mm. I um, gurgle out that mm. in my mouth. If you gurgle it, you can swallow it. Oh, you can? Yes. All right, okay. You can swallow it. It's the remnant of the food you ate. Right. So once you gurgle your mouth, rinse your mouth, you swallow the water. Okay. And you're good because naturally when you eat, you drink water. Right. Yeah. So when you take anything, it's good you take water, you rinse the mouth and you swallow the water. If you don't have where to pour it out, or if you feel like you don't pour it out, you can also pour it out. So. All right, doctor. So now you said that there are certain food, and, I mean, certain food, right, and drinks that I should avoid mm. for my teeth to be healthy. Are there also fruits or things that I should also eat, you know, yes, to you keep know, my teeth healthy? Yes, we encourage fruits, we encourage vegetables, okay. you know. Those are th these things, they don't, uh, they don't just, not just for the, for the teeth, for the, even the body. Now, especially fruits and vegetables, mm. they help in gum healing. Imagine you have some sores. Sometimes you just come down with sores. Mm. You know, when the body immunity is low in the body, you just notice a sore on your gum, you just notice or on your tongue. Those fruits and vegetables, they help in healing them. They even help in giving stronger teeth. Okay. So we encourage fruits, vegetables, generally for the body. Fruits right. and vegetables are very good. Wow, out of curiosity, I was going to ask if there are specific fruits. You know how they say, okay, for a healthy eye, maybe take more of carrots and apples, and, you know. So for a healthy teeth, are they specific, or if they are not, fine, but are there specific yeah. fruits to actually take for a healthy teeth? Actually, there are none. We cannot cone it down to a specific food. Fruits. fruits, right. No, no, no. Just take fruits generally. Okay. There's, 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 it's good in varieties, mm. you know, take varieties. Each, uh, each fruit has the particular effect it has, like positive effect it has on the tooth or on the gums. 
even uh, the one, the, you were, I think you were talking about carrots, it's good for the eyes. Yeah. They also have their benefits even on the gum mm. and the suit. Okay. So varieties of fruits, varieties of vegetables are quite good. You know, I used to have um, a friend many years ago in secondary mm -hmm. school who says that, okay, for a healthy teeth, take more of um, bones, you know, because of the calcium in the mm. bone. Is that true? Uh, no, <laughs> it's not true. Uh, talking about uh, yeah, the fruits, let me also mention that well, well, there are some fruits that are acidic. The acidic fruits, you know, we might all w sometimes want patients that have teeth sensitivity to do away with acidic fruits. Now, you see, those acidic fruits, it's just like acid, they wear off the enamel. Okay. So, if you take a lot of acidic fruits, they can cause en sensitivity. The surface of the, fr of the tooth will just wear off, and you start having sensitivity of mm. the tooth. Right. So like in as lemons, much as I'm saying like yes. lemons, lime, yes. sometimes not very ripe orange. O orange, yes. Yeah. So in as much as I'm saying that varieties, take varieties, mm. but try and reduce acidic fruits. Okay. Don't take too much of acidic fruits for the tooth. Okay. So for that of the uh, the bone, well naturally we don't we don't even encourage people to crush bone oh, with right. the tooth. You know, I hear a lot of patients come and say yeah, uh, they said we should be crushing bone. Oh, you've heard that too, a lot, doctor. Oh, a great. Lot. I, thought, I thought it was a lot. an old That one crush bone, that's when the calcium, yeah. the tooth, it makes the teeth stronger. Right. I mean, where's the calcium coming from when you crush the bone? You know, you crush bone, you crush it, you spit, you throw it, you spit it out. No, 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 no. When you, when you crush a bone, you calcium, calcium comes out. <laughs> that's what we believe. But it is calcium that comes out and it's also good for your teeth and the gum. No, no. All right. Oh, it's just okay. <laughs> Let's just take this call, sir. We have Ajayi who has called us from um, Lagos State. Mrs. Ajayi has called us from Lagos State. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Good morning. Morning to you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My question is, please, ma'am, my daughter, anytime I brush her teeth, blood comes out. So when I go to a clinic beside my house, now a bonjela to be applying me. I want to ask the doctor, but, and the bonjela is not for pain. All right. Thank you so Hello. much, ma. Yes, we heard that. Did you get the question? And second, okay. And uh, I want to ask, anytime you treat a malaria, must you change your brush? All right. I'm All right. asking the doctor. All right, please. Must you brush anytime you treat a malaria or any infection? Must it affect your brush? Must it change it? Please answer. Uh, no, 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 no. At all. You, you change your brush every three months. Or when you notice that the bristles of the brush are already flaring out. So it's recommended that you change your brush every three months. Or you notice that the bristles are flaring out, you know. They are already coming out like this. Right, yeah. You change your brush. But that's because you treated I malaria, you change your brush now. All right, sir. <laughs> Do we have a caller? Okay. So brushes should be changed every three months. Yes. And especially when you notice that the bristles are already yes. worn out or, yes. you know, you so could just change it. Yes. Even that, when it's not, yeah, when when it's not, not even up to three, three months. months. But you notice that the bristles are flaring out. Mm. But that because of malaria infection, you treat malaria, you change your brush now. All right. The earlier question she asked her daughter. Yes. Um, I would advise that she take the daughter to a dental clinic. Okay. Now, not uh, uh, maybe a roadside pharmacy, you know, because she said they gave her bonjela. You know, bonjela is just like they will rub it there. It's not solving the problem. Okay. It's, and it will not even solve the problem. We don't even encourage the use of bonjela okay. anymore. Now, what that child needs, most likely that child has bacteria calculus that are already entering into the gum. So a child can also... Have yes. calculus. I was thinking that was just for the adult no, teeth. The child can also have calculus. Okay. So the gums are already inflamed as a result of things that have accumulated in the gum. Like those pictures we saw earlier, where calculus are already entering into the gum. Mm. If you see those patients live, when they brush, they bleed. Mm. Sometimes when it can be as bad as without brushing, just notice your gums bleed. Mm. That's because a lot of calculus are packed into the gum. So that child should be taken to the dental clinic. They will do what we call scaling and polishing, the professional washing, mm. and check any other thing mm. that's an issue there. Mm. Then that's all that child needs. It's very simple, just the scaling and polishing. I'm sure after that, she'll be fine. How about some self-medication that we do at home? When you have a child whose gums are bleeding, you probably put salts 
in warm water. Uh, does that work? Yeah, the thing is, the use of salt and warm water, yeah. it helps in gum healing. Especially right. when there are issues with the gum, when All there right. are any sore on the gum. Okay. It really helps in gum healing. Okay, it does work. It does work. Okay, doctor, we'd like to take a call now. And we have Ola Yinka who has joined us <laughs> in Lagos. Hello, Ola Yinka. Thank you so much for joining us now. Morning, ma'am. Morning to you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm calling from the hospital. I have to ask you to talk about something. What happens to the from seven years ago? We can experience this one as much over here. We can hardly hear you, Ola Yinka. I don't know. The line is not very clear here in the studio. Okay, can you hear me now? Please go ahead. I think it's better okay. now. Okay, I want to ask a question. Uh, my son of seven years old, the increase of the four front teeth upper has removed now for over four months. It's not growing. What could, what could be the problem or what do you advise you do? All right, doctor, did you get the question? Yes, All right, Mr. Lyonka, please hang up and listen to the doctor now. Okay, um, from his question, it said the son is seven years old and um, the upper tooth four up has not yet erupted. Uh, it's not a thing to worry about. Normally, the upper tooth, the, it comes out around that age of seven, max eight. So it should just be calm uh, for over four months now. If, it's more, if you are too worried about it, you can just go to the dental clinic. They will take an x-ray, just a small x-ray of that part to check the tooth that is there. They will see the, will see the tooth on x-ray inside the bone. In fact, you can even estimate how soon it will come when you see it oh, really? on X-ray. Okay. And if there's anything that is stopping it, you know, we can always make it come. But uh, I don't think it's not an issue. It, for Mr. Lanyika, let me just encourage you to just be calm. Mm. In the next probably two, three months, it will be out. It will be out. Right. But if you are much worried, go to the dental clinic. Let them show you on an X-ray. You'll see the tooth there. And I think you will get more relaxed. You know, people are good at seeing is believing. Yes. Like when I see it, then I can believe. Yes. All right, thank you so much, Doc. So we have another call, and we have Gladys. Gladys has called us from Lagos. Hello, Gladys. Thank you for joining us now. Hi. Um, thanks for the program. I would like to ask, um, Gladys, could you speak um, up? We can barely hear you. Uh, good morning, Ma. Morning to you, sis. Um, thanks for this wonderful program. So I would like to ask, um, my teeth, one of my front teeth, sometimes it gets um, brown, and it gets white. Yeah, okay. I've used um, several toothpaste. For six years, I'm still having that, that same scenario. So what can I What's do? Scenario? What's the scenario? Doctor didn't get that. Like the front of my teeth, the one front. of my front teeth. Sometimes it gets brown. Sometimes it gets white. So I've used a rabbi, I've used other um six days. And I'm having this issue. So what can I do now? All right. Thank you, Gladys. Please hang up, Doctor, what that's into that. Okay. Um for Gladys, um Sometimes it gets brown. When you say sometimes, I want to believe maybe you feel it comes brown, later it gets white, it comes brown. But, you know, it can be an infection of the tooth. I would advise you should visit the dental clinic. Uh, also, we'll take an x-ray. We'll detect whatever infection can be causing that. Most of the time, once the tooth changes color, maybe it gets brown, maybe a particular tooth changes color from the other tooth, there's an issue on that particular tooth. Okay. And there might have been a trauma Maybe you mistakenly eat your face on something, eat it on something, or you mistakenly had a blow on it a long time ago, and it's just presenting now. Wow. It happens. So, uh, but most times, if it changes color, it doesn't go back to being white. So once it changes color like that, visit the dental clinic, they will do a treatment on it. Once we do that treatment on it, it can, you know, you can now do what, something like a crowning to make it, to give it back the color that yeah, your yeah. other teeth are. And yeah. you know, no one even know there was an issue with that particular tooth. So right. I advise her to visit the dental clinic. All right, Gladys, do well to visit a dental clinic. So let's talk about quickly on teeth braces. You know, I see a lot of people sometimes have these teeth braces. Is there any side effect, you know, to that? Okay. You know, bra bra braces majorly 
is for the arrangement of the tooth. Okay. Like you saw earlier, you said yeah, when we saw someone with calculus, you saw that the tooth were not well arranged. Yeah. Yes, it's for the arrangement of the tooth to make it arranged to the right way, how it's supposed to be. Just so there's this to be chain. well aligned. Right, okay. So there's this chain. Right. We call it braces. Okay. We we'll put it around the tooth there, up and down, to make it, it moves the tooth. It applies pressure and moves the tooth right. to align the tooth properly. So um, it's just for arrangement of the tooth. Okay, you know, when I see people actually have these braces in their teeth, I'm like, um, I used to think it was actually meant for people who eat a lot. Maybe they were just, doing, maybe they actually did that to reduce the way they eat as it might just cause some um, kind of like some inconvenience in eating like what we have on TV. But now I know it's for actually for teeth arrangements. All right, okay. Thank you so much, doctor, for giving us your time today on Healthy Living. I mean, I've been so blessed, I mean, hearing this today. This is like visiting a dental clinic. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to visit one anytime soon. Ah, you need. <laughs> <laughs> All right, doctor. God bless you so much, sir, for sharing your time with us. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, before we leave, we'd like you to please lead us in short words of prayer, sir. Okay. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your grace. Daddy, we pray, O oh Lord, that health come from you alone, that it grant us good health in the name of Jesus' name. Yes. As we grow, help us to be doer of everything we have learned in this place, in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Tokpe Aladirin. I'm sure you've seen a lot of teeth. Being a, uh, a dental surgeon, you've seen different kinds of colors, different mm -hmm. types of teeth. I mean, does that make you uncomfortable sometimes, you know? Uh, well, I'm used to it already, so, you know, seeing the tooth gives, us, gives me joy. Oh, come to the profession. Yes, and Correct. you know, when you see a tooth, uh, no matter how bad it is, you want to make it better. better. That gives us joy that we made it better. All right, this is the much we can take on the program today. I wish we could continue because I really wanted to know what to apply to my teeth and actually make it brighter and whiter. But all the same, maybe next time on Healthy Living, we'll try and invite another dental surgeon to talk more about our teeth. God bless you so much for watching. Our guest today has been... Dr. Tokpe Aladurin, he's a dental surgeon from the Redeemers Health Center, right? Yes. Here at the Redemption Camp in Nigeria. And today we have been looking at the topic, healthy teeth for a healthy life. I am Lillian Ogedebe. God bless you. Keep living healthy. We'll see you next time. Bye now.